first day of practice, but throughout spring workouts, summer workouts, how has the tempo kind of drifted over into every member of the team? I think that's a good question. Um, to be honest, which I think everything around here in general, we, we try to do at a fast pace, uh, try to make sure that it's as high intensity as possible. And I think that's more so what kind of filters through everything else. But uh, just knowing that we want to, we want to do – uh, we we want to play with tempo and be able to dictate tempo offensively. I think that has helped in the in the off season and definitely helped in the preparation part of it all. We've heard how Jake may pr maybe prefers to play fast. How has a guy like Donnell, who's really the point of that attack, sure. has he adjusted to sure. it? Sure, I think uh, the O line in general is what drives it all, no matter what you're doing. So to be, to get all those guys on the exact same page. Um, and make sure that everybody and everybody knows and adheres to kind of everything that we're trying to do standard wise. I think more so more so than anybody, but up front, those guys have to make sure that we're that we're on top of things in that way. There's an appetite for those who observe this program and who watch this program for change with the offense. How are you satisfying that appetite? Well, I don't know how I can answer that question right now, to be honest with you. Um, but the one thing I want to do is just give everybody a product that they can be proud of. And the one way, the one way that we can do that is, one, we're going to try to do a great job of getting our playmakers the ball. That's, that's going to be one. And two, we're just going to go out there and we're going to compete at a high level and play as hard as we possibly can to the very, very end. And I think if we do that, good things will happen. Brian, how much is it going to mean to have Debo back on the field? Anytime you get a guy that can score at any part of the field, I believe that helps you. Um, you know, obviously, he's one of those guys that can do that and has done that in the past. So getting him back is a, tr is a tremendous help. And being able to do different things with him and his skill set, I think, helps out a bunch. Brian, do you feel any extra pressure being the play caller and knowing that the offense is going to kind of have the, the microscope on it all year? Sure. Well, I, I think that kind of what, it, what, it's what comes with it. Um, you know, and to be honest with you, if, if I'm not comfortable being in that position, our player's not comfortable being in that position, then it's not going to be very good. Um, so we just got to – we can't focus on a bunch of that stuff. The only thing we can focus on really is going out there and being our best that day. And so right now that's our focus. Brian, for you personally, what's been the biggest challenge since being named full-time OC? Um, it's just really just making sure that everything, the, as far as the – Everybody, you're just responsible for everybody. You're responsible for it all. And I believe um, as long as you communicate well and put everybody on the same page when it comes to stuff, I think that gives you the best chance to win. Um, just know it's not just me. It's, it's the whole offensive staff. And uh, football is ultimately a team sport. And I think the biggest thing that, that exemplified that was the bowl game. Uh, you know, defense played well, special teams played well, and they kept us in it where all we had to do was do our part offensively, and we ended up hitting some big shots in that game. And I just think it's, it, it, it exemplifies what the sport and what the team is about and so that's what we got to do we got to play team ball and we got to go out there and we got to take advantage of stuff that we can so that's really all that we can focus on what are some of the little things that you guys i mean obviously big picture you guys want to work on every single yeah. thing but what, what are some of the things in particular that you want to see the offense drive as? um it's a lot um but the main thing is just focusing on today Focusing on today, we got to do a great job at, at ignoring the noise, and you know, what I mean, that's just that's just in general. Um, that's just what's being written, what's being said by not just anybody, but I mean, our families, friends, you know. And so we just got to go out there and be ready to focus on getting better that day. And um, and I, I say that as genuinely as I possibly possibly can. It's not a cliche thing, um, but that's where our focus better be if we're gonna if we're gonna improve at all. So that's right now is what is all all that we're talking about. And today, um, I felt like in some in some areas we did that, and and I felt like you know to be honest with you, we were kind of sloppy in some other areas. But we just got I mean it's, it's some of that stuff comes with first day stuff, and we just got to go with it. How much have you leaned on Dan Werner, and, and how has he put his imprint on this offense since he's been here? Um, you lean on all the coaches. Um, so I lean on Dan just as much as I lean on the rest of the guys, uh, to be honest with you. And so, you know, he's just, he's just a part of the offensive team as far as coaching staff goes. Um, I feel like, I mean, we take we can take facets from everybody. You know, the, the biggest thing about Dan and I is that we kind of came up the same way, you know, learn football through a, through through the through the pro eye, and then kind of spread out, and kind of had to learn stuff from spread stuff from there, and um, you know, we see a lot of the stuff the same, and so um, just more so wise. I mean, he he's really good as far as ideas and advice and things like that, but I mean, I lean on him just like I lean on everybody else. Right, if you look at about the wide receiver core, how, how good can this group be? Well, it, it it better be better than it was today. You know, that's the bottom line. <laughs> better be better than it was today. Brian, if looking back at the Outback Bowl, we saw a little bit of the tempo. Uh, you know, how much of that, or, or I guess, what percentage of what you want to do was shown in the Outback Bowl? Um, some of it. Um, you 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 want you want to be able to kind of go in and out of it and play and play the tempo, put the tempo game in in, in on on our terms. Okay. 
And so uh, I think it's going to change from game to game. I think you have to have the ability to change from game to game. Um, but you did see some aspects of it. How much is the running game just being consistent going to help with that? I mean, you know you guys had injuries last yeah, year. but man, we, we got to run the ball at a high level. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, I mean, running the ball efficiently and effectively, it, it, goes, it, it goes beyond importance <laughs> as far as being a good offense. And so, I mean, uh, and that's what you got to be able to do. So that is a focus, making sure that everybody understands the run game from the quarterback out. Um, and then being able to being able to have the you know do what we can to try to have the pen last if that makes sense what I'm saying we got to be able to get in a good get in the right play at the right times and and, and have the ability to kind of have answers for different things the defense might throw at us on any particular play but definitely run plays also. Is there anything you can do to maybe you know help Rico try to stay healthy? Is there anything you can do to kind of protect him? Uh, I think you know a lot of that stuff has to do with Rico, um, and you know not just not just him but just any individual. Um, some of the stuff you can't help. I mean, that's that's just kind of comes with it, and you know sometimes you get that buzzard look. But um, a lot of times, I mean, it, it's it's different stuff that you can do as far as preventing injuries, and that's the biggest thing that I feel like he's made the biggest step in. Not just him, but a lot of guys. You know, guy, you know, guys that come in and they play early, and they've never really had to learn how to do all of the stuff off the field to make sure that they can kind of maintain themselves at this level. And then you see it over and over and over again. But now, uh, you know, him being you know two years into it and kind of seeing how much. You know, it's a balance and things. Um, I think that's helped him a lot. What sort of process is that sorting through those running backs and maybe kind of trying to establish a pecking order going through a ball camp? Um, it's not. I mean, that, that's the beauty of practice. You know, guys that earn it or guys are going to get it. Um, the biggest thing is we have we have we have guys that have played. So it's it is a bit, it's going to be a really fun competition to see throughout the fall camp. How, how should this changes on the offensive line? How will that help the running game? I mean, you know, we, we I feel like we have guys that have played before, okay? And um, we, we have to establish some, some quality depth at that position as far as up front um, in general. So I think, you know, I mean, just making sure we got the right five out there and then making sure after that we got the right five behind those five, <laughs> behind those five I think that's going to constantly be something that everybody's searching for across the country. Um, but it, like I said, it starts up front. So, um, it's, it's, I mean, as, as stable as you can be and as good as you can be up there, that kind of that kind of drive that kind of drives the truck. Should you be able to get a, a bigger push with Zach back at left guard and Donnell in there and Sedarius? I, I think it, it it all changes. Um, you know, you look at this league. I mean, guys can beat you at any position up front defensively. You know, and so what you want to do is you want to make sure that you give guys the best possible chance to be successful. So, you know, if 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 strength wise, Zach's strength don't match up to the guy he's going up against, then that's that's bad coaching to ask us to block that guy. You know, regardless of whoever, whatever position that might be, okay. But um, you know, but there are different things that you can do uh, as far as scheme wise and and uh, and protection wise to kind of help guys out and things like that. But you know, Zach's one, Zach's a talented guy. You know, what I mean, he's one of those few guys that can legitimately play all five. So I mean, we're gonna lean a lot on him to kind of help bolster. You know, what I mean, help anchor or you know a spot or two, and then kind of be be able to bring other people along with him. What's the biggest difference, basically, take, having to take a wider angle view? of everything not just being a position coach but having to be concerned about you know everything that happens true the well it's uh, you, i think you mentioned it in the question to be honest with you i mean you you just the, the biggest difference is you, you're responsible for at one time i was just responsible for one group you know and then after that now i'm just responding now i'm not only responsible for the offense but you know the coaches and the managers and the you know the trainers that help out and the the, the the graduate assistants and you know so on and so forth so i think you know the biggest thing is just making sure that everything is communicated as best as it possibly can be is it more blank canvas or is it more just fine-tuning what's there uh, it's a little of both to be honest with you i mean we have a great understanding of kind of what we want to do uh there are some things that we got to make sure that we get good at so when, when it gets into that stuff that's when it kind of gets into the specifics and the fine-tuning um and there's some stuff quite frankly that 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 we might see and say hey you know what this way might be a little bit better and so um I, that's why i say it's probably a little bit of both to it how would you describe your personality and how do you think it affects your play cotton <laughs> well I don't know. I mean, the one thing I will say is just, you know, I I, I want to be aggressive. You know, I want to be aggressive. I, you know, I mean, I, I want to make sure that I feel like in order to score points, you have to try to score points. All right. And so I think, you know, I think that's going to that's going to be 
you know, my, my mindset as far as going out there and calling it, you know what I mean? And so sometimes I might have to get real back a little bit, and I'm okay with that. But uh, other than that, I just want to make sure that we're going out there and we want to be aggressive in, in, in everything that we do. Uh, well, I think it's uh, that that's a that that's a lot, but you know some of that stuff, um, some of that stuff is you know it's not just his fault, you know, and so I think that's an entire offensive, uh, as an entire offensive solution um, to be honest with you. And, not, and I'm not just talking about schematically; I'm talking about execution wise at a number of different positions to be honest with you. So it's not you know obviously that comes with being a quarterback and. You know, that's something that gets laid laid at his feet. But, you know, a lot of a lot of times that's stuff that's kinda of beyond him too. How much progress have you seen from Shy Smith since the end of last season? What do you feel like he's really improved on? Well, you know, since the end of last season, the only thing I've seen is spring practice and then one practice today. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, I will say the biggest thing, you know, he's a very intelligent guy and just the grasping of everything else that we're doing, whether it be new or old or stuff that, you know, I mean, fine tuning from, from what since stuff, stuff that we've been doing since he's got here. So that's the biggest thing I'm pleased with, with him. Where do he and Ortre fit in now with, with Devo back? How do you get all three, four of those guys on the field? Well, I, I mean, you play more than three guys a game, right. you know. So, I mean, you're going to go in the game playing six, seven guys, period. So, I mean, you want to make sure that you're – one, that those guys are constantly competing. But, you know, those guys are going to get opportunities even if they're not in the top two or three or whatever it might be. With that collection of receivers, do you feel everything – all the boxes are checked with what – what you have at that at that position? Uh, I feel like we got a chance. Like I said, I mean, after this morning's practice, I'd probably say no. <laughs> no. Uh, some, some, not as much. Now, obviously, not 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 that I can't do it. I'm kind of over there. So some. Where's the working there? Uh, so it's right now it's a collection between, you know, still got Coleman Hustler who heads all that other stuff up. But, uh, you know, T-Rob is kind of, T-Rob, T-Rob and I have been kind of. What players are what players? So it's it's a number of them. It's a number of them, and I and I don't want to leave anybody out. So I don't want to start naming them. But um, it, it's a number of them right now. So we just got to make sure. And it's open competition now. Obviously, that's the position that that we got to be good at too. Brian, we all know about Decarion's athleticism. How is his arm right now? Uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see. Um, you know, it's, like I said, it's it's still very very early. And and a lot of times, you know, whether a guy is accurate or not, that has a lot of it to do with understanding and overall understanding more so than anything else. And so. So um, I would like to see when all that, when everything else, as far as his understanding, kind of catches up with his ability, then I feel like you get a good, uh, good chance to see what somebody is really can do. Is a package of him, you know, kind of the, the wildcat, at least under consideration? Uh, we'll see. You know, it's still, it's still a, it's still a long time out, and he needs to worry about being quarterback and grasping other stuff other than you know a package. Yeah, to be honest with you, fewer decisions or more decisions this year. It, it depends. It depends on what you're asking, but um, I mean, I, I would say he's going to make. He's going to have to make more. He's going to have to make more. He's going to have to make more decisions as far as the run game. He's going to have to make more decisions as far as protection wise, and and uh, he's going to have to ma- have to make some decisions when it comes to obviously in the throw game too. So um, I would say a little bit more to answer your question. You kind of mentioned this simple? before, but what is the process been like of time management with you making sure you have you know your time with the receivers but also you know getting your input in, into the other yeah, rooms it, it, ta- it takes uh just being trying to be as organized as you possibly can and uh and have and, and being able to trust other people with their with their parts too you know so i mean I, I feel like we have a really good offensive staff here i don't have to worry about what the tight ends are being taught and i don't have to worry about you know i mean what the quarterback's being taught the line or the running backs being taught so that once we break there it does give me the time to allow to just go ahead and focus on the receivers when it's time to you know do position meetings and things like that you spent time with the eagles right up in yes. philly this summer yes. Yes. Uh, what can you share about what you took away from that um, a lot of stuff is um it, it, you know this a lot of stuff is is it was a confirmation more so than than, than some of the other things um, but you know, anytime you go up there, you just want to be able to pick up a thing or two that that might can help you. Even if you guys are, even if we are doing something similar, it might be a coaching point here or you know a, a detail here that might change up the whole deal. So, uh, but you know, I mean, we we, we felt like, I mean we spent a couple of days up there and got a bunch of access, and you know, I appreciate those guys obviously, and um, you know, uh, I mean, we you know got got a chance to talk a lot of ball, so I thought that was good. Yeah, obviously with Deuce being here and 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 there's a, a obvious connection there, but yeah, so uh, that was that was easy. Post snap, is Jake reading? How how do, how do his reads compare to 
this offense to last off? Uh, I think it depends on what what what's what's happening. Um, you know, pre snap some stuff's got to got to take place. Uh, Post snap some stuff's got to take place. Obviously in the in the past game, and if you are running an RPO, you know different things that you might be looking at. But all in all, some of the stuff's gonna be the same. Some of the stuff's gonna gonna be a little bit different. What percentage of times that he goes to the line of scrimmage does he have a run and pass option? <sighs> A good bit, you know, and a, you know, a good bit. I, you know, I, I don't want to, you know, but just but it's because. Not 100. No, it's not a hundred. It's not a hundred. But you know, most of the time, even in, even if it's not a run pass option, he'll have. I mean, what we have to have abilities to check out to be able to get in, to get out of a wasted play. Okay, and so what I mean by wasted play is just going up there and going to the line of scrimmage and running a play where. They have too many people over there for this play to be successful. So we need to try to do something else or try to get out and get into a better place. So I feel like giving mechanisms to do that is just as important as it is to pulling out and then throwing the ball on on, on, on the run too. Um, so, you know, like I said, I mean, a lot of that stuff's going to have to be, you know, is, is, is comes with overall understanding of what we're trying to do and understanding numbers and angles and things like that as far as the run games go. But, um, you know, a lot of it's going to be placed on the quarterback. It's going to be real similar to the stuff that I, you know, that we ask those quarterbacks to do in, in any other system that I've been in. And you said you have too many wasted plays last year. Uh, I wouldn't say that, you know, but in, in, in my opinion, one, one wasted play is, is too many. You know, and so obviously we're not going to be batting, we're not going to bat a thousand on any of that stuff. But you know, anytime, anytime you can get out of a negative play, I feel like uh, that that helps you out. Coach Muschamp said that you guys got a little more meeting time during the summer, and he said he felt you guys were ahead in terms of install. Yeah. Do you kind of feel that, and and where do you guys sort of feel you are in install after spring, after that kind of stuff? Um, I do. I feel like it helped. Um, it definitely helped just because you get a chance to get it out front and get it out and. and get the stuff communicated out in front before you even come in. Um, so you get meetings before the meetings, you know, so to speak. And so I, th I think it just helps with overall understanding of, of, of what's, what's to do. And now it just comes to the fine tuning and uh, the fine tuning of everything, which we didn't do a very good job of today. We're sloppy. So. Do you feel like you have most of, most of what you want installed at, at this point? Um, I, think, I think we do. And now we, now we kind of backed off and then kind of went back through you know, and kind of have a process of how we want to install, and we're still at that. I mean, so we kind of backed and went to, you know, level one, you know, before we working back up to that. I think your average is about 24 points a game yep. last year. Where does that number need to go? Uh, it's not enough. Uh, it's not enough. It's definitely not. I mean, I think that put us near the bottom of the SEC, um, and de definitely that's not where we want to be, you know. What do you do to try and make third down? an asset instead of a problem like it was last year? Well, you know, a lot of it, you know, third downs, you know, third down situations come up to first and second down, what you do there. And so it's just putting a premium on making sure that you do, you do, you're doing a really good job on first and second down. And obviously third and four is a lot more manageable than third and 12. Okay, and so that's what we've tried to make sure that you do a good job on first and second down and staying out of those third and long situations as best as you possibly can. Obviously, that's not going to happen all the time. And then um, that gives you a best chance to kind of be able to keep your playbook open as much as you possibly can. Because third and 11, third and 10, stuff like that, you kind of have to get one dimensional a little bit more than you want to be. And so uh, that as soon as anytime you're one dimensional, that's not that's obviously that's not good. Just an observer of the Eagles and what they've done with their tempo and RPO stuff. What have you noticed from those guys and what what makes them efficient? Um, you know they got good players. Yeah. That helps. Yeah. Um, you know that that really really helps. And so um, I mean just outside of that, you know just those guys do a, those guys do a good job. You know anything on the professional level as far as those guys what they walk into the building knowing and expectations and uh, you know it's a little bit different because up there it's a job. You know what I mean? You know, you don't get it done. It's not coach going to get on me. It's, you know, they're going to have somebody else in there the next day. And so um, you just you just see the overall poor. You just see the professionalism of, 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 of everything. But, you know, those coaches, man, they got really good coaches. Got Those guys do a good job over there. What's the number of plays that you'd like to run in a game? And kind of when do you decide when sure. to go up to I, home, I when to would like back. to run as many as possible. Mm -hmm. I like to run as many as possible. So whatever set number that might be, I don't know what that is, but I like to run as many as possible. Yeah. Brian, going back to third down, with your tight ends, do you feel like you got a pair of hands on the roster who will give you what Hayden did, especially on Well, third I don't know if you could replace Hayden. Um, I don't think that's possible. But, you know, we, we, we have guys that's, that's had really good off seasons. You know, KC Crosby, you know, Kiel Pollard, Jacob, Al uh, Jacob August, I'm sorry, Mark Way, um, Evan Henson kind of keep coming along. So we just got to make sure we do, do a good job of developing all those guys and seeing which which 
combination or one or two give us the best chance to win. Those are the guys that's going to play. What is there a particular archetype or kind of tight end you look for, or is it more you just take the guys you have, sort of work around them almost? Um, I think any, you know, coaching in general is – kind of what you said in the latter. You know what I mean? You just got to figure out, okay, what what can this guy do best and make sure he's doing that, you know, because if I, <laughs> you don't want somebody who can't run to, to be out there, you matching up in one-on-one -on -one situations, that's just, you know, it's not very smart. So, um, but as far as, as far as what you want, I mean, I think anybody wants as good of an athlete as they can at any position. You know, and then kind of can go from there because that allows you to do a number of different things. But, you know, we're going to put in guys out there that play the right way and know what to do and, and, and can execute at a high level and make plays. That's the biggest thing. What does Josh Van bring to this wide receiver group? Um, he, brings, he brings good depth right now. Obviously, he has a, he has a big, he has a big skill set. Um, he's still trying to figure out which way is up and down right now. Um, but you know he's he's a skilled guy and he has a bunch of talent and um, you know we're gonna we're gonna do the best to get it out get every bit of it out of. Him. How do you balance going fast but also going slow enough to where Jake has enough time to make decisions? Pretty soon? Um, I think you got to have it in the system to where that's the case. Um, so you know you have you have to do things to make sure that that you're giving guys keys if you want them to go fast where you're giving guys keys to help them out in the decision making process. But um, I just think that you have to put that in the system. When you're designing an offense and you're pulling all these different ideas and concepts, what's the process like to sort of try to narrow it down to sure. something everybody can digest? Sure. Well, we, what you want to do is is make it as easy as easy as it can be to be learned. You know, um, you don't want to go out there and beat yourself because you're way too complicated. You know, and so, you know, just trying to make sure that everything systematically works. So, you know, this might look good and that might look good, but if I can't marry it up where I call it the same and and it all works out in in the same manner, then you know, it's it's going to be hard to do. So, what you don't want is as much memorization you want you know all systematic okay all right i'm number one on this i got that i'm number two on this i got that and so on and so forth so just trying to make it all work